Welcome everyone to another international relations capsule for the Shankar IAS Academy. Today our topic is the visit to India of Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia. In fact, we can start with a little breaking news because while we speak, the two leaders have just started meeting in the Hyderabad house. So we do not know what they are talking, so that will have to be covered in the next uh, episode. And uh, we will today talk about the expectations of the visit. So far, what has happened is the two plus two, that is the foreign ministers and defense ministers of the two countries have already met today. There's a new development. We have this with the United States, but with Russia, we have started the two plus two dialogue for the first time. So that is significant. So today the two foreign ministers and the two defense ministers have met. And this has strategic uh, importance because foreign ministry and defense ministry coordinating uh, policy between India and Russia. And one news which has come out of this meeting is because we don't know the details, is that uh, we raised, India, Indian Defense Minister raised the issue of Chinese actions in Ladakh and the fact that they are continuing to occupy Indian territory across the line of control, line of actual control. So we don't know what the response was, but this news has come out of the two plus two meetings. And also they have signed some agreements, defense cooperation agreements, as we had expected. So that is the news at the moment. But let's go back to the history of this. This is part of the agreement reached between Russia and India to have annual summits. With very few countries, we have the uh, luxury of having the heads of state meet every year, regardless of what happens. And um, so this has continued. Um, and uh, But unfortunately, 2019 was the last time they met because 2020, because of the pandemic, there could not be a, a meeting. And therefore, after a break in 1920, in and at the end of 21, we are having this uh, uh, bilateral summit, which is part of the annual exercise. It started when Mr. Putin was in India, together with uh, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, the Prime Minister at that time. So this is a tradition. And uh, the difficulty, Till the last moment, we are not very sure that such a meeting will take place because there are several aspects to be taken into account. First and foremost, the pandemic itself. President Putin had not gone out of Moscow since the pandemic broke out, except once to meet President uh, Biden in Geneva because of the crisis arising in Ukraine and other problems between the two of them. So their first meeting took place. And that was the only occasion Mr. Putin went out of Moscow after the pandemic broke out. And this is the second one. So this is very significant that the second visit he is taking, making out of the country. At a time, the pandemic is actually getting worse in Russia, that he has chosen to come to India at this time. There are other problems, like the difference of opinion between us, India and Russia, on the Chinese uh, action. Of course, they are not siding with the Chinese. They are not siding with the Chinese or they are not uh, defending the action. But overall, they take a, a rather uh, a neutral uh, position. In fact, in the early stages, they gave the forum, they, they gave the venue for Indian and uh, Chinese foreign ministers to meet in Moscow. Of course, they did not intervene, they did not mediate, but an occasion was created for uh, the foreign ministers to meet. So in a sense, trying to help the a resolution of the crisis. But after that, many months have passed, uh, but the situation on the line of control, line of actual control still remains uh, uncertain and worrisome for India. And uh, we are, of course, taking the view that things may take time to work out and therefore con so the consultations are continuing. But we cannot expect Moscow to support us or to say that what the Chinese have done is wrong and therefore, there is a, a slight difference of opinion between us and Russia. That could have been one obstacle which would have prevented this meeting. Uh, the third one was Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, India and Russia, Soviet Union have cooperated during the long Soviet occupation of Afghanistan. India was supporting 
the Soviet Union. So there's a history of our having seeing Afghanistan with the equal, uh, with the same kind of eyes. We had the same position on Afghanistan at that time. But after the takeover of the uh, of, of Afghanistan by the um, Taliban, there is a slight difference between India and Russia. Russia should have supported India's position fully, given the background of the history of uh, Afghanistan. But they have chosen to be on the side of China, which believes that uh, the Taliban government should be legitimized and they should be given support for them to uh, run the country. And therefore, they have continued their embassy in, uh, uh, in Kabul. And the same position has been taken by Russia. But they are not taking an identical position like China. They are also their concerns about uh, uh, terrorism. And they know that uh, a terrorist, narco terrorist state in Afghanistan will be harmful, not only for the region and India, but also for Russia itself. And that was the reason why Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan in 1979 to stop such tendencies. Uh, but now they have taken a more moderate line with the Taliban which is different from ours. But when we had the NSA meeting on Afghanistan in Delhi, unlike China, Russia participated in it and they have kept a dialogue with India. And therefore there could be, because both of us have common uh, positions and concerns on Afghanistan, that could also be bridged the difference. But there is a difference. And uh, that was another reason why this meeting may not have taken place. The other difference of opinion is on the question of Quad uh, and uh, Indo-Pacific. In fact, the Russians do not like the word Indo-Pacific. They would rather keep to the old name uh, that is Asia-Pacific because they think that when you say India-Pacific, it has a certain connotation. And they have openly voiced it. Uh, but in principle, Russia also agrees that it should be an open seas in the Indian Ocean and that there should be peace and the concentration should not be on containing China. So China also has a legitimate role, Russia thinks. And so these are all the differences which persisted. And so there was some doubt as to whether uh, such a dialogue will take place at this time. But I think the credit goes to India. India has been very deft in the last few, few months in meeting as many people as possible, whatever the situation, even with the Chinese foreign minister, we have had meetings. So we are not staying aloof from tackling the problems. And uh, we go out of the, our way to speak to the Chinese even, to the Russians, to the Americans, and try to uh, find a common ground among all of them. That is India's diplomacy now with our um, selective alignment policy and not non-alignment. So we are trying to maintain a dialogue with everyone, with the US, with China, with Russia, and it should be seen as, as part of that. So that, that's why this has a, a very important significance because this meeting is taking place at a time when there are several differences of opinion, some wrinkles as it were in India-Russia relations. So the idea is to iron them out. And Russia itself also is in a, in a controversy regarding Ukraine. And um, the, the Ukrainian uh, president has been saying that there would be a war tomorrow, day after tomorrow, or on the first week of January. So he has been saying that because about 92,000 Russian troops have been amassed on the Ukraine-Russia border. Of course, Russia's, Russia's position is that uh, this is our own territory. It's for, up to us to keep as many soldiers as possible in our territory, and therefore Ukraine should not worry. But Ukraine is really worried, and the United States is also worried that it is possible uh, that Russia might uh, invade, or according to president of Ukraine, uh, stage some kind of a coup with the support of some Ukrainians. So there is tension there, and therefore it was difficult, must have been difficult for President Putin to leave uh, Moscow at this uh, uh, particular time. As far as Ukraine is concerned, Russia has a red line. They will tolerate Ukraine as much as they can. But the moment Ukraine joins NATO, if that happens, they think that they will somehow prevent it. And that is the 
the the point where there could be a conflict and um, so the this accumulation of troops and all on the borders of uh, ukraine are meant to frighten ukraine away from joining nato but uh, reports are that uh, ukraine is pushing its membership of nato and european union and nato and the united states are supportive of this move so unless ukraine um, restrains itself and not join nato uh, there could be some problem on the on the border um so on ladakh on um, afghanistan on um, indo pacific and all these there are differences and perhaps uh, this would be an opportunity for the ministers to speak about it and the intention is that there could be uh, some kind of uh, uh, consensus on these issues if not consensus at least some proximity of views and that is what prompted this meeting to take place and of course covid itself remains a big issue with the new variant of concern and uh, everybody is concerned about the possibility of air travel etc in the next few days and that also was some kind of an impediment but the real reason for this visit is bilateral relations uh, because one of the most important things that is happening now is that the s400 missiles are being delivered while we speak and while mr putin is in town a major uh, defense contract because it is not unusual for india to have major defense contracts with russia and uh, this is a 500 5, sorry 5 billion dollar deal and it is controversial because the united states is threatening to impose sanctions he went about the purchase of this and we probably have an understanding with the united states that they will not impose uh, sanctions because they have no interest to weaken india's defenses particularly when they think of china so the impression that one gets is that uh, there may not be catsa sanctions which uh, us has been threatening uh, but so far the indication seems to be that they may not happen and therefore the s400 missile thing will go through and that's a major accomplishment for putin and a good uh, sign for india's defense uh, system Uh, so that is one of the major uh, items and it is a kind of celebration of a sovereign missile there is also another celebration today that is the 6th of uh, december as we talk this is the day when india recognized bangladesh as an independent country in 1971 and in that of course soviet union played a big role and therefore it is appropriate for russia and india Uh, to be together on this particular day when bangladesh celebrates its uh, anniversary and um, so uh, and th- therefore for bilateral relations this is very important and it seems we don't know the details it seems that a de- an agreement has been reached for defense, defense cooperation from a long term perspective and one of the activities suggested is that um, india will start manufacturing ak203 um uh, uh, rifles assault rifles to be manufactured in india not only for use in india but also in russia and also in other countries to which russia supplies uh, such armaments so this would be a big contract apart from that there would be uh, possibility of uh, more different contracts which you will come to know today or tomorrow then there is another big uh, involvement that uh, india and russia have is the involvement of india in the development of what is called russia's far east when um, uh, our prime minister was in vladivostok china expressed an interest in diversifying the developing activity development activities in the far east where china is very active and they probably wanted to balance it with indian uh, influence and activities in the far east and india has even extended a credit line uh, to russia uh, 1 billion dollars credit line has been given to uh, russia for projects to be executed by indian uh, for com- companies and indian material the usual thing about credit line is that once a credit line is given that money can be used only for 
uh, project assistance from the country which gives the credit line. So we give the money with one hand and takes it by the other hand. That is what, how the credit uh, lines work. And so there is activity there and um, it is necessary to uh, stress the importance of it from the point of view of India and uh, um, Russia. Then uh, it is expected there will be a set of a, a framework for military and technical cooperation for the future, maybe for the next 10 years. And uh, this is in the face of uh, um, proper problems on the China border and also uh, America's own reservations about India getting too dependent on the Russian uh, arms supplies. Of course, India used to import almost 70% of arms, of arms from Russia, now it has been reduced to about 40%, but still it is a major uh, importer of arms from Russia. And uh, therefore, this 10-year project or whatever cooperation program which will be signed or already signed perhaps, uh, will lead to uh, defense, trade, investment, energy, and technology. All these aspects will be covered and uh, the details will come out uh, or, or soon. But we know that uh, these things are likely to happen. Then the terrorism is another issue on which uh, Russia and India have uh, common perspectives because uh, they are also threatened. Russia is also threatened by terrorism. And though they are supporting the Taliban, they also have concerns uh, that the Taliban activities or their occupation, their, their running the government in Afghanistan will not lead to they're exporting terrorism to various countries, particularly where there are, there are sensitivities on the Muslim population, like Xinjiang in China, where uh, there is a concern. And in Chechnya, in Russia, there is a concern about uh, possibility of uh, uh, terrorism, particularly uh, Islamic uh, fundamentalist uh, terrorism. And that will, of course, also be uh, covered. And what we have been promised is that after the visit, there will be I'm quoting the word sizable and formidable joint statement. So it's a, always a tradition for Indian and Russian leaders when they meet to have a comprehensive joint statement covering all these areas of interest. And um, that will probably be available tomorrow and it will deal with global issues. It will deal with the UN. It will deal with regional issues and um, you know, certainly uh, bilateral issues. So we can look forward to that. Uh, but the general outline of what is going to happen is already clear, even before the two leaders have finished their meeting. They're actually meeting at this time when we are uh, talking. So we have to look forward to much uh, tomorrow. We know the problems. We don't know the solutions. Uh, but certainly the attempt is to maintain the good relation that India has, with, has had with uh, um, uh, with Russia, uh, but recently because of various circumstances, Ladakh, Afghanistan, and um, generally Indo-US cooperation, uh, Russian, Russia-Chinese cooperation, all they have brought in some complications into uh, Russia-India relations. And those are the ones that we expect uh, will be uh, explored and perhaps thought about. And uh, I see in India's own attitude a considerable amount of tolerance and patience in our diplomacy. Like, for example, we would be normally very, very nervous uh, when uh, there is uh, <clears throat> any occupation of territory by another country, which is something which uh, we, we do not accept. We used to have what is called a zero tolerance, because when this happens, our all out effort will be to vacate that. And that is what we have been trying. But though we have failed, we are not making that into a big issue. We are not boycotting China. We are not, we are still talking to them at every level, including in the foreign minister's level. And that is a, a new trend in India's foreign policy. But maybe it will take time for uh, this to be sorted out, but we were not going to wage a war on account of that. And that is something, uh, something new. And also on the question of, uh, of alignments, you know, we are a non-aligned country that we have changed. So, but we still remain uh, strategically, you know, we are uh, um, or 
we, we have uh, maintained the policy of uh, strategic independence. And, um, and we have been saying that we must also be able to align ourselves with uh, other countries, selective alignment. So this selective alignment seems to be spreading because we seem to be having alignments with various countries. Um, the AUKUS has created problems for uh, uh, Quad, but we're still talking to the Americans. There may be other problems with the United States that are criticizing democracy, et cetera. But we are still talking to them. We are strengthening our relationships. Uh, with Russia, the same thing. And even with China, once this is over, uh, we'll probably have another strategic partnership. So what we are witnessing today is an effort by India uh, to spread its cheer and friendship with many countries, despite the differences we have with them. And on the policy that uh, the foreign minister or external affairs minister has ever emphasized that conflict should not, sorry, um, differences should not become conflicts. And that's being repeated also by President Biden to the Chinese and that uh, cooperation should continue. So there is a new spirit perhaps created by COVID. Uh, but anyway, uh, the nations generally are uh, in a mood to accept, to cooperate, and uh, strengthen relationships in spite of all these uh, uh, challenges. Ukraine could be a hotspot. Taiwan could be a hotspot. Um, Indian Ocean, India Pacific could be a, a problematic situation. So all the more necessary for all the big players uh, to be talking to each other. And, uh, and we will know tomorrow as to what adjustments uh, Russia has, is prepared to make in order to come halfway towards India's position. And then we can see probably a change in, uh, in Ladakh. Russia may not want to mediate, but Russia may influence China to continue with the disengagement from the areas they have occupied. And uh, Afghanistan also, there could be some understanding about um, uh, supporting uh, the government of uh, Afghanistan with uh, humanitarian assistance for which already there is considerable amount of money with the United Nations. But who do you give it to is the, is the issue. Do you give it to the terrorists who will uh, use it for other purposes? And that is the only concern. Otherwise, a mass tragedy in Afghanistan can be avoided. At the moment it is heading towards uh, mass starvation and uh, collapse of the government, uh, collapse of the, uh, the structure. And, um, and it is in the interest of all of us, including the UN, to prevent that. And therefore, there could be an understanding, at least on this aspect, but not on recognition or on Indian embassy going back. These things are too early and we are still waiting. So these are all the things that we expect uh, from President Putin's visit. And uh, we can follow the developments today and tomorrow. And perhaps next week we can make a, a clear assessment. Uh, but my present uh, understanding is that this will lead to a relaxation of tensions generally. And also these wrinkles which have appeared in India-Russia relations will be ironed out. And we will one, once again be as friendly as we were with Russia. Of course, Russia cannot expect India to support the modern train. We cannot expect China to uh, oppose China in Ladakh. So these are all hard red lines. Uh, but uh, even within those lines, diplomacy has a chance. And that is what is happening in Delhi at this time. Thank you. Well, Ukraine was already independent when the uh, Soviet Union broke up. Ukraine okay. became an independent country, so there was no question. Uh, but um, in uh, 2014, um, Russia uh, started believing because uh, Ukraine wanted to see they can understand an independent Ukraine. But they don't want Ukraine to be a part of uh, European Union or NATO because it becomes a threat in the heart of Russia. So their basic line is that Ukraine remain independent but must not become a part of the 
um, NATO pact. And um, so that is why they have been putting pressure on them. But in also between, in, in between, Russia also took away Crimea from, yes, uh, right, which was given to Crimea by Soviet Union earlier, Russia earlier. And that yes, has been taken away. And that was, an, but that they tolerated it. There was, you no, know, the Ukrainians have not attempted to take it back. And, uh, but they are still, so the Russian fear is that if they still continue with NATO and European Union and get the support of the Americans, etc., that will be a direct threat to Russia. And that is why they have amassed this uh, troops in case um, they, there is any any problem, that any movement, then they might act. And they have said it very clearly. If we join NATO, that is the end of it. That is the <laughs> end of our patience. No, AUKUS is a purely a military group, as you know, and we are not part of it. And uh, but the only thing is, it came in the middle of the Quad being formalized and formulated, and therefore it created some confusion. And also, it created some confusion because uh, the Americans and the British are giving nuclear technology to Australia. Australia yes, is a, is an NPT country. Yes, and uh, under this pretext of the AUKUS, they are giving it to Australia, which was also of concern to us. But then Australia is now a bulwark against China. Yes, sir. So we are also happier with Australia because Australia was a great friend of China. That has changed. And yes, therefore, sir. we have taken the AUKUS in our stride. And yes. we have not uh, uh, raised any questions about that. But, yes. so, but in a way, it was good for us that because our Quad is no more a military alliance as it was originally intended, and it concentrates on other things, while the hard security aspects will be looked after. Yes. I think I dealt with, with it already. Um, America has still not said that they will give a waiver to India from CATSAW. We, you all know about CATSAW. That's a new law of the US government. Uh, which is supposed to impose sanctions on any country uh, which has sizable military uh, contact with an enemy country, or shall we say, a country which is not in your group. And that uh, is, a, is a law. And so if that law has not to be implemented, then you need a waiver. And um, one senator has already moved that members of the Quad should be exempted from CATSA. And members of the Quad, the only country which can be accepted is India, because Australia and Japan are already alliances. So there is no question of sanction. So, so in the given the situation, now the indications that we have are that uh, there will be no sanctions on the American side. I don't think uh, uh, Russia will ask for our support on the Ukraine issue. That is not in our region, and we are not uh, involved, and we will normally not speak about it. And so, our, our not talking about it is probably the best support that we can give, uh, because that is a sensitive issue for uh, uh, U.S. also. And therefore, it is possible that uh, uh, we will not say anything about what is happening in Ukraine, but we may probably privately request them not to make the situation any worse. Well, they will take care of it. <laughs> we, will, we will not be involved. Uh, but um, there is enough deterrent on the part of uh, US has made it very clear. And uh, Biden has been in touch with both uh, um, Putin and Zelensky, the president of Ukraine. And they want to avoid it at all costs. And the only guarantee the Russians need is that Ukraine will not be accepted to NATO. And that is the only uh, condition. And that may not be difficult to accomplish. Why go to NATO so much in a hurry? Well, thank you very much.